as we stand here in October 2016, there's many young people out there that are crying for fees to fall. Now, if fees don't fall, people who are trapped at the bottom of society because of persisting racial disparities compounded by gender discrimination and class inequality will be trapped at the bottom of society. But because the Constitution promises them improved quality of life and free potential, they can't suffer silently as other people did in the past. My personal view, you can share it or not, is that we dropped Section 237 of the Constitution. Section 237 says constitutional responsibilities must be given priority and implemented diligently. Which means whatever resources we have, whatever policy possibilities we have, we have to do the things we must do first before we do the things we would love to do. When you decide your policy priorities, when you decide what you're going to fund, when you decide you're going to bail out SAA and yet another state institution that is being run down by its own board, do you consider Section 237? When you say to the public potential, we don't have money to fund you, yet a week later you have five billion to bail out SAA, we knew that the new South Africa needed us to traverse a journey in order to achieve it. The Constitution gave us a bridge. But when it comes to the issues of racism and eradicating systemic inequality, the Constitution knew that it alone is not enough. So what must rise? The promises we, we make must be kept. Task teams, policies, strategic plans, and things like that don't change lives. They only provide us with roadmaps. The only way we can change lives is if we implement those things, and we implement them consciously and in a committed way, and we constantly evaluate if we're making a difference. What must rise is knowledge of the Constitution. If you are going to be the driver of a car, surely you must be the first to understand the car. What also must rise is remembering the past. Remembering the sacrifices that people made. Remembering the promises we made. But more than anything else, remembering that we did say we're going to create a South Africa that belongs to all who live in it. And when we talk, therefore, we should never talk as if there are some who don't belong here. For that, we are grateful to Ahmed Kadrada, Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Helen Joseph, Albertina Sisulu, Winnie Mandela, and all of them, too many to count. It is our time, though, to make sure that the precious South Africa they delivered into our hands is nurtured in line with the constitutional dream. It is a South Africa that belongs to all of us. It is a South Africa where we don't fight white people, we don't fight black people, we fight racism. Together we can ensure that the dream of an equal society where there's social justice and racism, sexism, and all other forms of discrimination is achieved. And to do so, the state has to be accountable, operate with integrity, and consistently become responsive. Thank you.